Ano naman? Hindi ko po alam. Wala na yung preaching. Okay, so praise the Lord for the songs that we have heard. Uh, he's been faithful, truly only God is uh, completely faithful po sa ating buhay. And because of that, oh, on Him we should stand. The Bible says that compared to Him, all other ground is sinking sand. And that you cannot be trusted, cannot be depended upon. However strong, however uh, strong they may seem, we should only stand on our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that if you do otherwise, you're foolish. You are not really a wise man. So we, uh, praise the Lord for those uh, songs, even for the song that we, uh, the songs that we sang in the congregation. Uh, I believe that they were a blessing. But no, mat- no matter how good the lyrics are, cannot be compared to the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. And we have uh, read our text a while ago. And uh, before I start, um, let me go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, again, dear Lord, for. Uh, the Bible reading that we had. Thank you, Lord, for your words that we can uh, turn to, Lord, that we can uh, glean principles and dig uh, precious uh, promises and precious uh, principles, the Lord, in your word. Not only to see them and understand, Lord, but this will be, this preaching will be in vain and this message will be in vain if nothing will change in our lives. So, Lord, I pray that as, um, as you have uh, uh, taught me through the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that through the same Holy Spirit, I will be able to explain this uh, to the people. And you will use me, dear Lord, as your messenger and that this will be a blessing to people. Help each and everyone have uh, understanding, Lord. I pray that you open their hearts and ears, Lord. Uh, don't let the devil, dear Lord. Uh, do anything in order to hinder us from uh, from listening and understanding your word. May I pray, Lord, that uh, we will be able to glorify your name through the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So last uh, uh, last week we've studied. Actually, I was not scheduled to preach, but I I uh, I don't know. I I said I, I told the preachers if a uh, pastor will not preach, uh, I would like to preach because. I know, pag nandito na si Pastor, matagal bago ako makapag-preach. Six weeks, six weeks. So, kaya, ang tagal na ako nag, uh, sa 2 Corinthians, 6 chapter 6 pa lang. So, but we'll be in here in, uh, we're, we read verse 1 to 10. And uh, last week, we've studied the last part of chapter 5, which ended in a principle that tells us that we are ambassadors of Christ. That we are to live for God, and we are living here representing heaven and Christ. Not only ourselves, not only our lives, not only our name. Actually, our name compared to what we are representing in Christ and representing heaven as citizens of heaven cannot be compared. The reason why we live righteously, the reason why we live as uh, the Bible asks us to live is because we are representing God and we are representing heaven. And here in chapter 6, Paul started this uh, verse showing people how to live as ambassadors and at least how he lived as an ambassador of Christ. Here, in, uh, you, if, if you have read, if, if you remember, we've read this a while ago, uh, starting from verse number 4 until 10, Paul is saying uh, things in, in, in his life where he remained consistent for the Lord. And that is the title of our message today, Consistency. Okay, the, mes- the, the message today is entitled Consistency. So um, the, our main uh, study will be from verse 4 to 10, but we'll go through 1 to 3 uh, anyway because it's very important. So um, one of my favorite, uh, no, actually my all-time favorite player in sports is Kobe Bryant. Uh, he can never be replaced in my heart, you know, even though he's retired. Uh, he's, uh, he's my favorite player. So uh, one thing I like about him is his consistency. You know, day in, day out, he works. Day in, day out, he trains. He shows up for games. No matter who they're facing, weak teams, strong teams, he gives his best. Okay, he doesn't, uh, uh, di katulad ng mga players ngayon, puro pahinga. Pag mahina ka laban, pahinga. Parang mga, ano, hindi binabayaran ng milyon-milyon. No? Pero, uh, Kobe Bryant, during his day, he plays. W- whatever, means he, uh, he dislocates his fingers, goes to the bench, pop it back. Wrap it, play again. He breaks his arm, same thing. As, as long as hindi pasira ang kanyang paa, maglalaro, maglalaro siya. Consistency, you know, uh, one thing in life, in, in whatever you are doing, 
You can have talent, you can have knowledge, but if you're not consistent, you're not really going to be successful. And that's the same thing in the Christian life. It requires consistency. You know what? We can, we can be good today. We can be spiritual today. We can be strong today. We can know a lot today, but we can fall tomorrow. We can forget about it tomorrow. From Monday to Saturday, live like the world, and Sunday become spiritual again. Without consistency, we're no, never going to glorify God. And this is what Paul has challenged, again, the people at Corinth to do, to become consistent in their living. Uh, Paul has enumerated things here, actually, 9 plus 9 plus 8, 18 to 26 things that he listed where he became consistent. That's why I wanted to start immediately uh, and pray that I will be able to finish, uh, finish this uh, message. So time is... I don't have my cell phone, ko, so I don't have time. So, 10.58, but let's try to finish this. Now, Paul himself, uh, if, if we have noticed, starting from verse, uh, from chapter 1 until chapter 6, is always emphasizing one common theme here, at, at least until chapter 6, is to live worthy lives, worthy of, lives worthy of our calling. You know, I, I think in every message I've preached, I have emphasized this. And we can never emphasize holy living for the Lord. We can never emphasize it enough. We should always say that. We should always have that in mind in order to live a life that is glorifying to the Lord. This is actually Paul's concern to the Corinthian people. He wants them to live lives worthy of their calling. Because they're called to be Christians. They're called, their people are calling them to be followers of Christ. But then something else is ha happening inside the church. Something else is happening there. There are sins. There are uh, things that are not glorifying to the Lord. And to the eyes of the unbelievers, it's confusing. You know, if you say one thing, you do another thing, it's very confusing. You say you're a Christian, you live like the world, it's very confusing. If you say that you are uh, you're the follower of Christ, that you gave your life to the Lord, but you're, you're wasting your time in everything, in things that are not really are just really of this world, then that is very confusing to people looking at you. Especially Paul. People are looking at him for the simple reason that he started a lot of churches. And, and the churches that he started, people are looking at him as an example to, to live. Um, because uh, if, if you remember, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. So Paul actually told people to follow him. Because he's living a life that is glorifying to God and because he's following the footsteps of Christ. And that he is careful in his life to live a life that is worthy of the gospel. To live a life that is worthy of being called a Christian. To make sure that his testimony will not stain his ministry. His testimony will not strain his message. He actually, uh, it, it is one thing because in, in the life even of the Apostle Paul, he, he expressed frustration na mahirap sa kanya even for him to live consistently. Kahit po sa atin mahirap. Mahirap po na day in, day out, every day, uh, nakakapagbasa ka ng Bible, every day, nagpe-pray ka, every day, you, you, you dedicate your life to God, every day, you make sure that your decisions, your words, your actions are glorifying to God. It's one thing to say that, but it's another thing to do that every single day of our lives. But the challenge is, we do it consistently. We do it every time. No matter the circumstances, you're happy or not, Glorify God. You have money or not? Glorify God. This is something that we have to be consistent about. And it's hard because we are in the flesh. You know, the flesh is pulling us in a, uh, a direction, in an opposite direction uh, from what, where the Holy Spirit is leading us. It's, there's a battle. Actually, here in Romans chapter 7, Paul expresses frustration. Verse 18 says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. There's nothing good in our flesh. Diyan ang galing yung mga sinasabi ng Calvin is that you can, uh, uh, we can never uh, really uh, uh, accept God or really seek for Him. Uh, there's nothing good in our flesh. Sabi niya dito, For to will is present with me, but to perform that which is good, I find not. This is our problem most of the time. We know what's right. We know the will of God. We know what to do. But we cannot really find it in us to do it. Minsan po kasi mas nagbibigay tayo ng mas malakas ang flesh natin instead of our spiritual lives. And, and, and that is not the fault of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not fail to remind you. The Holy Spirit does not fail to remind us of the things that we have read. It is actually our fault because we, we give more things to the flesh than to the Spirit. Actually, I was, I'm, now I'm reminded of the preaching yesterday. Sakto eh, kasi nung nag-preach ko yun, dalawang balot ng spaghetti na ubus ko nung breakfast. 
Tapos tinatawanan ako, tinatawanan ni Deo ba nagpipisik ko yun ng uh, about sa health. Pero one thing na kailangan po natin batayan kasi uh, one thing na re- I realized while he was preaching is that para sa ating mga Baptists, yung pagkain, eh normal yan. Masarap kumain eh, kain lang ng kain. But what we don't realize is eating is of the flesh. Of course, we, we have to eat. I'm not saying don't eat. Pero kaya nga nagkakaroon ng fasting eh, to, to weaken this flesh. That's why, if kung sa ganong simpleng bagay, hindi natin kayang kontrolin, how much more sa ibang bagay? We are much nearer to be uh, tempted by our flesh. Kaya nga po, tama na. Next, uh, tuloy natin yan ha. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Ikakat ko yan, hindi ko i-upload. I find not, okay? Uh, the next verse, For the good that I would, I, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more than I, I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Bakit? I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yun yung hirap. Pagka nag-decide ka ngayon na gumawa ng tama, then the devil is immediately right there to stop you. When you decide, Lord, I'm going to give my life to you. Lord, I'm going to live a life that is worthy, that is glorifying to your name. The devil is right there. will offer you things that will make you fall. Amen. The devil will stop you. Kaya nga po, hindi madali ang ministry. Amen. Hindi po madali ang kahit anong bagay na gusto mong gawin sa Panginoon dahil may kaaway. Amen. Mayroong tao na nag-hinder. Mayroong tao, mayroong, mayroong tayo kaaway na nagsasabi, Hey, I will not let you do what you desire for the Lord. And sometimes, uh, most of the time, minsan sa, sa, sa ating buhay, yun ang nananalo. Okay? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Now, for Paul, he's saying here that my mind is renewed. You know, we are being transformed and, 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 and by the renewings of our mind. So now our mind is renewed. Our minds are towards the things of God. But again, our flesh is uh, wanting another thing. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Even what, who we consider as probably the greatest Christian who ever lived has this same struggle in his life. The same struggle that we're having to live consistent lives, to always do the will of God, to always do what's right, to always do what, what is uh, 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 pleasing in the sight of the Lord. But we fail. But the challenge this morning is to be consistent in what we're doing. To be consistent day in and day out in what we're doing. Para pong ang um, isa, isa sa pwede natin tignan dyan uh, ngayon, na example nga ni Kuya Jun kalam nyo kagabi si Kuya Jun nilakad nila yung airport, ay nilakad nila papuntang airport baka sila papuntang airport, no? Iniisip ko ka, magagawa ko kaya yun for the sake of health? Parang hindi ano po? Pero uh, he, what, what he's trying to do if he, he decided to take care of his health, he has to be consistent No. So, our pastor started that way before any of us even thought of starting it. But he tried to be consistent. Sabi nga ni Kuya Jun, sabi niya, sa diet daw, lakad pa rin ng lakad. Pero ewan ko kung kain din ng kain. Kain din siguro ng kain. Pero at, at the same time, he's trying to burn that. Trying to be consistent. Kasi kung, kasi ilang beses ko na rin tinry yung no rice na yan, mga kapatid. Ilang beses, kahapon, no rice. Eh, si Jalil, sayang yung pagkain. Nagtira siyang dalawang subong kanin. Alam naman itapon. Eh, di, sin- kinain ko na yun. Diba, sabi rin, pangit din po yung nag-aaksaya tayo ng mga ano, pagkain. But, it's one other thing to be consistent. I- even in, kahit sa mga simpleng bagay lang na pagbabasa ng Bible, if you're not consistent, there's nothing's gonna happen. Kahit sa simpleng bagay lang po, i- even in the simple things of praying, having a quiet time with the Lord, be consistent in that. No matter what you feel, even if you feel we wake up feeling sad. You wake up feeling happy. You wake up feeling like you don't want to do anything. Pray anyway. You wake, you wake up like, like you don't feel like reading the Bible. Read the Bible anyway. Be consistent in doing that. So, before we go into the things that Paul uh, enumerated, let's go to the first point here in verse 1. It says here, We then, as workers together with Him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God, in vain. Sabi niya po dito, we then, first, first uh, point here is receive not the grace of God in vain. Very creative uh, point. We then, as workers, sabi po dito as workers, what are we workers of? In chapter 5, remember, last, uh, last week we studied that we are, we have the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors. And our message to the world is, be reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled to God. That is our work. That is the ministry that God has given us. 
the Bible, he says, we then as workers, that is our work, together with him. You know, Paul actually considered these companions as his partners in the ministry. And no matter how, many, how much uh, uh, great work God has done through the life of Paul, Paul, first of all, acknowledges that it's God's work, it's God's uh, strength, but also he acknowledges that it is everyone who is helping him uh, 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 is a factor in what he is doing. Even in the, in the very famous verse that we all know, Philippians 4.13, uh, uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you read uh, from verse 1 until that verse, first of all, Paul is saying that I can do all things because of God. And in the middle of that, uh, of that passage, I can do all things because I have fellow laborers, like the church at Philippi, helping him, sending him relief, and, 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 and uh, these fellow laborers with him. And I can do all things because I have learned to be content because I have learned that in uh, whatever I uh, have food or I don't have food uh, 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 I have uh, somewhere, somewhere to sleep or I don't have somewhere to sleep I learn to be content therefore I can endure or do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me kaya nga po kapatid we are workers together with the Lord kaya tayo po dapat nagtutulungan hindi po tayo nagsisiraan, hindi po tayo naghihilahan, hindi po tayo nagtutumbahan, nagtutulungan tayo. Why? Because whatever we accomplish as a church will be in the account of everyone in this church. Whatever we, if, if we glorify God in this service, it's in the account of everyone. If we glorify God in what we're doing, it's in the account of everyone. That's why it's in our best interest to help each other. Amen. Hindi po tayo nag, nag uh, co-compete here. We're not competing. Well, galing ng kanta ni sister. Oh, next week, mas gagaling ako yan. Hindi <laughs> po ganun, di ba? We're workers together with Him. You know, we can, our pastor can never accomplish anything by himself. Preachers can never accomplish anything by ourselves. We need the help of everyone. Even, even sa preaching, hindi po namin to kaya mag-isa without you praying for us. Hindi po namin to kaya without God's help, without the Holy Spirit's leading. We are workers together with Him. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's important to note here that serving the Lord is a team effort. It's not individual. Kaya nga yung OKC, laglag na. Kasi hindi team effort. Dupang kasi si Westbrook. Yun po yung nangyari dyan. Kaya, even, even in sports, you have to work as a team. Except if you're playing singles tennis. Because you cannot work as a team because you're playing alone. But even in sports, you have to work together. In, in everything that we do, a company, people has to work together. They cannot compete against each other. Why? Because it's going to bring a company down. And if we start competing against each other, if we stop working together, then this church will, start, uh, will stop to exist as well. Yeah. The reason why this church, and dito pa ito, how many years have we been here, is because people of people are working together. The reason why we have reached uh, so many people by the grace of God in other villages is people working together. Wala namang out, outreach na nag-iisa, nagpupunta yung preacher. Even though may leader dyan, lahat pa rin, team effort. It's, if without the teachers, without you guys, it will never be successful. And God is using everyone. God has give, given us gifts in order to use together for the glory, for, for the, uh, glory of the Lord. Sabi dito, we then as workers together with Him beseech you Okay? Also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. And this reminded me of our, our discussion this morning. Now, Paul here is talking to believers because he, he, he uh, first of all, he assumes that we're workers together with him. So, ligtas yung mga kausap niya. Now, we beseech you that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Now, the grace of God is received freely. Okay? It is received or accepted, whatever, freely. It's freely given. Hindi po natin pinagtrabahuhan ang biyaya ng Panginoon. It has been given to us. All of us, if you are saved, have received the grace of God. But the Bible says it is very much possible that you have received the grace of God in vain. That you have received the grace of God in vain. Sabi po, sabi po di, na, ni Paul then in 1 Corinthians 15.10, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace, which was bestowed upon me, if I may add, freely, was not in vain. Sabi niya, yung grace ng Panginoon na binigay sa akin, it was not in vain. Why? Uh, why? But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Now, this is now where the partnership comes. God gives His grace freely, but we still have to labor for Him. Hindi po automatic yun. Hindi sabi, Lord, bless you po yung magiging camp namin. I hope that it will be successful. Tapos walang tayong gagawin. 
It's impossible. It is a partnership. You rely on God's grace. You pray. You rely on the strength and the grace of God. And then you do your best after that. That is how it works. Hindi lang po puro grace of God. Kasi minsan ako confused tayo. Sino ba talaga nag-work? Ang Diyos o kami? Both. We're both working. Kaya nga minsan, hindi ka naman pwede mag-pray na lang. Lord, sana po magkaroon kami ng uh, uh, enough money this month. Tapos di ka magtatrabaho. Hintayin mo na lang na mahulog ang pera. It's, it's impossible. You have to work as well. Now, now, while relying on the grace of God, while while relying on the strength of God, you also have to do your, your due diligence. Kaya nga sabi dito ni, ni Paul, but the grace of God, which is bestowed upon me, sabi niya, but I labored. Durumabaho pa rin siya. And partnership with the grace of God, the strength of God, and His labor, His diligence, a lot of things has been accomplished in the glory of, uh, for the glory of God. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, we are to rely on the grace of God and then go work in His vineyard. That is what we are, what we are to do. Kaya po wag po natin i-confuse yan. Now, don't let the grace of God become vain in your lives. Ibig sabihin yun, naligtas ka, hindi ka na nag-grow. Naligtas ka, wala kang nagawa sa simbahan. You, got, you, 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 you were saved, yet you did not use your life for the glory of the Lord. You were saved, yet you did not serve in the ministry. You were saved, yet you did not grow spiritually. Then you have received the grace of God in vain. Para po, it's like what happened, para basketball, isip ko. It's like what happened to the Lakers. Right? They have received the, what they call the LeBron James. But it was in vain. Why? Because they didn't reach the playoffs. Okay? They got eliminated. It's, the, it's like that. You receive a, a, a great player, but they wasted that. Right? B- because of uh, wrong decisions in management. I don't want to give uh, my opinion on that. So, ano ko na lang, blog. But, but, it can happen in our lives. You know, the grace of God is all we need for everything. It is sufficient. It is sufficient for every need, for every trials, for every temptation, but we fail to rely on the grace of God. That's why it's in vain in our lives. Sometimes even though we work in the ministry, we do it in our own strength, the grace of God is in vain in your life. If you preach here, you do it in your own knowledge, your own strength, the grace of God is in vain. Why? Because you didn't use it. You didn't rely upon it. Now, he, he said, I beseech you as workers together, receive not the grace of God in vain. And in, here in verse 2, it says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the time accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Which points out, that Paul really thinks that some people here at Corinth are not saved. Because he said this, you know, siningit niya. I believe also in every preaching, we also have to, to, to put there the gospel. Always. Kahit na one point, kahit na pa, 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 pa happy. Why? Because we can never be, we can never be sure, we can, we can never be sure that everyone who's sitting in front of us or sitting there are saved. Kaya nga si Paul siningit niya. Because I, I know Paul believes here that the people who are giving him problem after problem after problem are not saved. Maybe they, are not re- they haven't really received the grace of God in the first place. Yun yung nangyayari. That's why he said, now is the time. Don't waste it. You know, if, the, if you have been putting it aside, if the Lord has been knocking on the door of your heart, if the Lord has been, has been uh, t- uh, if the, Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit has been convicting you to repent of your sin and to put your faith in Christ, the time to do it is now. Because someday it will be too late. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. One day it will be too late. One day it will be too late to receive the Lord, to, the, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. One day it will be too late, even if you repent of every sin that you did here on earth, once you are judged and condemned to go to hell, it's too late. You can never beg God, Oh God, please send me to heaven. Oh God, please don't throw me to hell. It is too late. If you, if you put it off, why? It's foolish to put it off, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Why? You don't know, you're not sure of tomorrow. The Lord might come tomorrow. You might die tomorrow. And then uh, how, it doesn't matter what's, what your age is. You may be young, you may be old. You, you can be taken anytime. You can die anytime. That's why you don't put it off. If God has been convicting you to repent of your sins and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, do it now. No, no other time. Don't put it off even for tomorrow. And, and my challenge here also as well is also for Christians. If the Lord has been calling you or talking to you to serve the Lord, now is the time to do it. Don't put it off for your career. Don't put it aside for what you want. 
Don't put it aside for your dreams. Why? The most important thing that you can do is the will of God. And it's a blessing to know the will of God. And it's, and it's, it's so, so much more uh, a blessing to do the will of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Our, our time to serve the Lord is limited. Dito lang po natin pwedeng gawin yun. This is the only opportunity we have to, do, to serve the Lord, to work in His ministry, to do it because of love, to do it in faith, and then have reward in heaven. Once it's done, pag wala lang po tayo dito, it's over. You cannot bring back time. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Now is the time to serve the Lord as well. I don't know what God is calling you to do. I don't know what the Lord is, 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 is uh, uh, working in your life. But what I know is you have to obey that immediately. Do not delay obeying that. Don't waste opportunities. Okay? Moving on, it says here in verse 3, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Para bang sirampla kasi Paul, no? Ulit-ulit, halos-halos sa lahat ng chapters, sinasabi niya ito, live lives that are worthy of your calling so the ministry will not be in vain. So that the Lord will not be blamed. Sabi niya dito in the earlier, uh, the first uh, time that we tackled this, sabi niya, we have Go have good testimony for the sake of the gospel. And then sabi niya, have a good testimony for the sake of representing God. And now he's saying now, have a good testimony for the sake of this ministry that is entrusted unto us. Ito naman yung sinasabi niya sa chapter. And then, para siya sinaplaka ulit, 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 sinasabi niya sa people here at Corinth to live worthy lives. Huwag niyo sirahan yung testimony niyo. And, and surely, that their testimony already stained because of all the sins that happened in the church. But, Saying this verse, now Paul is still beseeching them, Paul is still telling them to do it, means that it's never too late to start now. Kahit na sila na yung testimony nila eh, maraming na po nangyari. Meron, ng, uh, meron na siyang sinasabi kay Paul na padala nyo na kay Satanas yan. Bayaan nyo na si Satanas dyan kung anong gusto niyang gawin. Even though meron ng uh, kinakasama, kinakasama niya ang kanyang stepmother, Diba? Proud pa siya. Meron ng ganong klaseng uh, stain sa testimony nila. But Paul is still beseeching them. Why? His point here, it's not too late. Still, start from now. Live lives that are worthy of the ministry. And it's never too late for any of us here. I, I know a, a lot of us here have past that we are not proud of. And we should not be proud of. Okay? Anyone here who is proud and boasting of his uh, uh, wrongdoings in the past is not saved. I know a person here. He came here before. He's even preaching behind his pulpit, but he always boasts of his past. Oh, you know, during my day, if, if, when I was not saved, I would have already destroyed your face. But are you proud of that kind of attitude? You know, you should be ashamed of that. As much as possible, don't let people know that. Or maybe let them know that to show them what God has changed in your life, but don't be proud of it. But that's why the Bible, Paul says, start from now. Again, start. Live lives. He already said this in 1 Corinthians. He already said this in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. He's saying it again. Why? He gives so much importance in this. Romans chapter 2, verse 21. In the following verse, it says, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should that steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, Dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest both thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. It is a sad thing na masabi po sa atin yan, that the name of God is blasphemed because of this church. That a lot of people will not be uh, open to the gospel anymore because of what we did as a church. That is one thing that is sad na pwedeng mangyari sa ating simbahan. That's why we have to live a life that are, are, are uh, according to the Word of God. Kaya ka po sabi ko last week, imposible po maging scriptural church tayo unless each individual here are, have, are living scriptural lives. Imposible. Because why? A lot of us can endeavor and labor to, to, make the, to have a good testimony as a church, but only one person can destroy that. Only one person can destroy everything that we are working upon. And it's sad kung, isa, kung ako yon. It's sad kung ikaw yung gagawa nun. That's why Paul, Paul always says, Hey, please, live lives that are worthy of the gospel. We all need to be concerned with our testimony. We all need to be concerned. And we, are, we all are guilty of that. 
Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. We have to be careful. Nitay makatisod. You know, it's okay na makatisod ka proclaiming the truth. Because the truth hurts. Yung mga tao na hindi sumusunod sa katotohanan, pag pinish ang katotohanan, matitisod yung mga ayaw sumunod. That's okay. Pero kung natisod dahil sa ugali mo, hindi okay. Right? That's, that's the point here. Do not be a stumbling block. Uh, when you preach and, and they get hurt, that's fine. But then when they get hurt because of your words, the words that you use, then that's not fine. That is destroying your testimony. Paul was so serious about this that even he depraved himself of things that he wanted. It says here, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, let's just read 13 to 15, but it actually starts from chapter 1. I'll just explain it. Sabi niya dito, Do we not know that they which minister about the holy things live of the things of the temple? Okay? Lagi ko narinig sa... Pinas, pero iba yung application. And they which wait at the altar are partakers of, with the altar. Even so had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Paul is saying that because I work spiritual things with you, then uh, it is my right that you support me. That's what Paul is saying. But I have used none of this. Bakit? Neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than... Any man should make me my glorify, glorying void. Sabi niya, he even forgo support from this Corinthian church. Why? Para hindi siya mabalikan. Para hindi siya, he accepted support from other churches like Philippi because these people are, are, have good attitude. But since this Cor- the church, church at Corinth are, are, have, uh, are consists of people who have uh, bad attitude or some are unsaved, sabi niya, wag na lang ako tumanggap ng tulong sa inyo. Baka naman ibalik nyo pa sa akin yan. Baka naman isampal nyo pa sa akin yan. He even forgo of these things. Privileges. Why? For the sake of the gospel. That's how important it is. Okay? Now, we'll go to the meat of the... Okay, I still have a... a, a time here. I think we will not be able to finish, but please uh, bear with me as I try to speak like a rapper. But in all things, verse 4, but in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God. The word here, approving, in, in Greek is sunistemai, which means to, be, to prove to be, to demonstrate, display, to be solid or firm. Hindi lang po sa salita. Approving ourselves as ministers of God. Now, all of us are ministers of God. We have the ministry of reconciliation. Now, we have to show that we really are ministers of God. Hindi lang po basta sabi, ipakita po sa ating buhay. Now, Paul says here, he para bang nilatag niya yung resume niya until verse 10. Nilatag niya, saan ako mga bagay na naging consistent? Now, I still proved myself to be a minister of God despite all these things. In first, first thing here, he said, in much patience. Now, Paul started this uh, uh, alliteration is in the word patience. He says here, the, the, the Greek word patience means humoponi, which means steadfastness, endurance, diligence, or triumphant patience. Hindi po ito yung passive waiting. Hindi ito yung passive patience. Hindi yung uupo ka lang sabihin, I have patience and I'll sit here doing nothing. Hindi po yun. Sabihin itong patience is doing, working while waiting. Now, he is, he is uh, uh, patient. He endures things. It means active endurance. You know, sometimes in our lives, Christ puts us in a situation where we need to endure. Now, sometimes we don't know wh- why it happened. We don't know how it happened. But just Christ just allowed that in our lives for us to endure. The Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to endure. We are to be patient. That means in, in everything that happened, kaya natin pa rin na mag, ma, mapakita na tayo yung mga minister ng Panginoon. Whatever happens. Sometimes, people, uh, people will not listen to our words but listen to what they see in our lives. Minsan, hindi effective yung sinasabi mo eh. Sometimes, they can dismiss your word especially if they don't believe the Bible but they can never deny the patience that they see in you. They can never deny that. They can never deny the fact that whatever happens to a Christian, he's joyful, he's continuing, he's serving. They cannot deny that. Even if they don't listen to you, even if they don't like you, they cannot deny the fact that you're continuing and you're showing patience in your lives. Kaya nga po dapat mapakita po natin in patience. Not only that, in afflictions. In afflictions here means oppressions, distress, tribulation, or sheer 
physical pressure on a man. Para po ito yung sinasabi na uh, something that weighs us down. Parang inaapakan ka. In affliction, ito yung mga bagay na ang hirap, pressure in our lives. We are to be consistent even in this kind of situation. Of course, Paul has experienced a lot of affliction, but he says, I remained true to the testimony that I want to show people. Afflictions, in afflictions, para bang, ang, the question for us here is, what does it take to stop you from serving God? What does it take? Ano ang, ang bagay na pwedeng gamitin ng jablo sa buhay mo para patigilin ka? And you're, you're the only one Uh, who can answer that truthfully in your life? What does it take for you to stop? Threat of losing your job, will you stop? Threat of losing your family, are you going to stop? Is that all you can give to the Lord? What will it take for you to stop? You know, Paul has uh, 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 forsaken everything. Family, uh, pleasures of this life, power, authority. He forsaken that just to follow the Lord. Whatever happens, he said, I remain consistent. Whatever pressure I am, I, I am uh, experiencing, not only in afflictions, in necessities. Necessities here, Greek word, anagke, which means distress, calamity, or great need. Marami na po tayong nakita na mga tao that are preaching God using them mightily in whatever way in the church, and then because of great need, stop. Marami na po. Too many, even in, our, even in my seminary days, dami namin. We started uh, a lot of us, but only. Ilubak kami graduate. I think five of us only grad. Only five of us graduated. Why? Some of them stopped because their family needs something. They need to work, so they stop. And, and what's sad is they don't just stop going to the Bible school. They stop attending altogether. I don't know why. It's, it's like part of. It's like a requirement that if you stop Bible school, you also don't go to church anymore. But that's what happens. And then one, another one of them, uh, and uh, a brother Mon knows him. Uh, 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 another one of my classmates, I actually looked up to him while I was in seminary days because he showed much patience and diligence studying the Word of God. But now, he's not serving the Lord anymore. Why? Because of great need as well. You know, let us not underestimate this thing in our lives. Minsan po, dun lumili tayo yung character natin pagka talagang wala na. Pagsaid na. Kahapon nga, nagpipreach si Kuya Jun. Ito, ito yung kainin. Dapat ito healthy. It depends sa budget. Diba? Tama nga naman si Kuya Gomes eh. Healthy nga yung, yung salmon. Wala ka nang pambili. Okay. Eh di, galunggong na lang. Diba? Yun yung mga area. Kasi ganun talaga. Depende rin sa budget mo yun. But, but you know, uh, this should not dictate the way we live our lives. You know, sometimes God gives you, uh, God allows great need in your life to show you His, pa- uh, His power in you. Para mapakita niya po sa iyo. Now, nagbabago ka ba? Pag wala ka ng pera? Mainit na ulo mo. Ayun, da- na-experience ko na rin po sa buhay ko yan. Pag wala ng pera, init ng ulo. Uy, wala nang ano. Wala nang... Pero syempre, ba't ako magagalit? Wala, yun lang, di ba? Wala ka namang karapatan magalit. Diba? But, great need, you know. Skip. Okay, in necessities. The Bible says, you know, uh, the reason why Paul can do this is because he has great confidence in God. He says here in Philippians 4.11, Not that I speak in respect of want, For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. That's his secret. Kaya ka po, merong pera o wala, food or not, he has a place to stay or not, he learned to be content. That's why that's his secret. He remained consistent even in the midst of great need. Now, we have also have to learn this, to be content. I remember when we were younger, yan yung award ni Mili sa school. Wala siyang honor, wala, wala. Ang, honor, ang award niya lang, uh, most content. Pero hindi wala. Kung ako, marami akong honor eh. Pero siya, wala. Most content lang. Naalala ko lang. Uh, side note, okay? Uh, <laughs> Alright, so rich or poor, we are to serve God. You know, the Bible says even, even if we don't have a lot in this life, we are promised so much in the future. Kaya nga po, da, um, uh, we, have, we have to learn to be content. An illustration I've read here is a man uh, who's living in a small house with two children, his wife and his parents, his old parents. Nairindi siya kasi maingay. And then, uh, it's so, so noisy and it's also crowded. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like his situation. So he went to a wise man. And a wise man told him, do you have a, a, get a rooster and put it in your house. So he was uh, really confused. So he took a rooster, put it in his house. And then, lang. It, it became noisier and more crowded. So he went to the man and said, Why, uh, what, what, what should I do next? All right, do you have a cow? Get your cow, put it in your house. 
So he put his, uh, the cow in his house. And then after that, uh, week after week, say he, he put a rooster, a cow, two dogs, and even the, the children of his brother put it in his house. So in, in, in his anger that, he did, that his situation is not improving, he kicked everyone out except the original people in the house. And then uh, when, the moment that he kicked everyone out, that's when he realized the peace and quiet with only his children, his wife, and his parents. You know, sometimes kailangan lang po natin maging contento. You know why? Not, don't look at the things that we don't have. Rather, look at the things which God has given us. Because if we look at the things that we don't have, lalo ka mong frustrate. Wala ka maging na cellphone, wala ka maging na sakyan, wala ka maging na bahay, wala ka maraming ipon, wala ka gato, wala ka ganyan, wala ka... Lalo ka mong frustrate. If you look at that, you focus on that. But if you focus on what God has given you, then you are not going to be frustrated. Kaya nga, minsan, I'm telling my wife, uh, frustrate siya. Nga, 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 hindi na nakatulog. Napalo na nga niya. Ako, hindi ko pa napapalo yung anak ko. Napalo na niya ang dalawang beses. Pero sabi ko siya, kung ang problema mo lang, lang natin, ay maingay na baby, we're so blessed. Kung yun lang. You know why? Because we have been given a baby. And that is the blessing. If you focus on that, then you're going to appreciate God's goodness. But if you focus on her, the baby's crying, you will spank the baby. You know what? Mami, iyak na yan. Konti na lang. Ngayon, kaya nga minsan, uh, it depends on our perspective. We need to learn to be content. Not only in necessities, but in distress. The Greek word stenokoria. A strong, uh, here, lagi na sinasabi ni, ni Paul itong distress. But this word is stronger than anything that he has said before. He says here, the narrowness of place, extreme affliction, cornered or confined to a narrow place, hemmed in on every side. As the Israelites, parang nung mga Israelites were on the Red Sea. Na, on every side, on every side they look, there's distress, there's pressure. Yung sinasabi niya, even when this happens, I remain consistent. That's what Paul said. And even if that happens in our lives, we are to remain consistent. I know that all of us here are facing distress. Marami pong problema, maraming uh, kailangan isipin, maraming kailangan gawin, but we have to remain consistent anyway. We have to, hindi, pagka po ba may problema, pagka ba mahirap na ang buhay, hindi ka na mamumuhay ng tama sa Panginoon? Hanggang dun lang po ba tayo? But the Paul says in distress, I still, I still remain consistent. Why? Because of his uh, 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 complete confidence in the Lord. In distresses, it strives. Now this is something that hindi man natin nararanasan. It strives. It, it says here that strife means savage and excruciating punishment. Yun yung, yun yung nararanasan ni Paul. You know, you know the whip of the Romans? Sa dulo merong uh, dalawang bola made of uh, uh, sharp bones. Yun yung kanyang nareceive. Hinahampas siya nun. Not only that, he was, he's being in prison, he's being beaten uh, uh, almost to death. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I more. Why? In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. Mas, mas madalas ako nakukulong. In deaths oft. Of the Jews five times I received forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. Yeah, one thing that I noticed here when I read, read this verse, and side note lang, sabi niya dito, are they ministers of Christ? Yes. Pero sabi niya, I more. Bakit? Because I suffer more. You know, that, hindi natin na-realize yun. To be ministers of Christ means to suffer for Him, to, to, to experience the fellowship of His suffering. Kaya sabi niya, I more. Why? Mas marami ako naranasan because of Christ. Mas marami suffering. You know, He says that I, I suffer is okay. Why? Because I know Christ more in, in the midst of this suffering. That's why, you know, the reason why, uh, hindi lang po si Paul, even the early Christians, it seems like their homes are the prisons. It seems like their deaths are always uh, uh, untimely. It seems like their deaths are always uh, 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 masaklap. Pakitulungan si ate. Okay, it is like, a, you know, reading history and history will tell us that because of the consistency of these people and their willingness to give their lives, to be martyred for the Lord, today we are able to be called Christians. Alam niyo po, kung wala lang yung consistency ni Paul, even in stripes, kung hindi lang po tiniis ng mga martyrs, ng mga early Christians, yung pagsunog sa kanila, yung pagpakain sa leon, yung pag, and they're being beaten, they're being pursued day in and day out. If they did not endure that, if they did not remain consistent, we may not be here today. And we owe that to them to also be consistent even if we experience this somehow. You know, today we don't experience any stripes. Did anyone here uh, 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 receive beating because of preaching in the outreach? No. 
None of us here have them. But it's a shame that minsan threat lang titigil na tayo. Minsan uh, uh, so only uh, only words can make us stop. Words can change our conviction. It only words can change our uh, stance for the truth. That is really shameful for us. That we should be ashamed of that. No, minsan, okay, hindi ka na namin kaibigan, matakot ka na, magbabago ka na sa Panginoon. Nakakahiya. Silang, kaharap nila, leon. Nakakita na ba po ba ng leon? Kung gaano kalaki yan, and they know that they're going to be eaten by lions, but they stand for God anyway. They don't denounce their faith for God. You know, what, what, they're being burned at stakes. At stake. They're being uh, killed. They're being sown alive. But they remain consistent in their faith in God. And nakakahiya po mga kapatid, maliit na bagay lang ngayon, napapatigil tayo. Problema lang. Away lang. Hindi po ba? Uh, wala lang pera. Uh, wa- mawawalan lang ng kaibigan. Mawawalan lang ng pamilya. Tumitigil tayo. Why? It's really a shame if we think about that. No, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the Lord, for the sake even of the future generation, stand for your faith in God. In despite of distress and strife, despite of great need, be consistent with the Lord. In strife, it says here, um, what's the next? Okay. Naralak uh, po illustration ni Daddy, and I noted it here. And his name actually is Thomas Hawker. Uh, in 1555, 1555, his, he, he was, uh, because of the gospel, he was to be burned alive. So now, while he was in prison, his friend in the next cell to him asked him, he said these words, Thomas, I have to ask you a favor. I need to know if what others say about the grace of God is true. Tomorrow, when they burn you at the stake, if the pain is tolerable and your mind is still at peace, lift your hands above your head. Do it right before you die. Thomas, I have to know. That is what his friend at the next cell said. Now, the next day, he was burned at the stake. Now, uh, remember his friend said that do it before you die. So now, uh, actually when I read it, it says that he was burning, that he's, he's, uh, he does, doesn't have fingers anymore because of, uh, of the pain. But then, before he died, uh, he was not moving when he was being burned. He was just calm. The, the people thought he was already dead. But then at the moment right before he died, he raised up his hand and actually clapped three times. You know, these things are the things that people endured. Why? And we can only understand fully and experience fully the grace of God if we decide to endure these things in our lives. Kaya nga sabi po ni Paul, di ba? And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. We can never experience the strength of God if we will not experience weakness in our lives. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Kapatid, we, what we don't realize is God allows all these uh, things in our lives to happen so that we can realize the power and the grace of God. If we don't submit ourselves to these situations, we can never realize that. And such a great loss. You know, if hindi po nagsubmit ito si Thomas Hawker, hindi niya mararanasan yung grace of God in dying. I don't know, of course, none of us here has experienced that. Yeah. But then, someday we may experience that if we will remain uh, faithful to the Lord uh, until the end, until this time. Okay? Not only in that, also in imprisonment. Now, Paul was arrested several times, seven times to be exact. But one of his greatest book that is to- telling us to rejoice, the book of Philippians, was written in prison. Yeah. That means he remained consistent even in prison. In tumults, tumults, or parang basa dito, tumults, Greek word, akatastasia, which means instability or confusion, a state of disorder or commotion. You know what happens during this time when they preach somewhere, okay, they go to a place and they preach, angry mobs come at them. Susugurin sila, bubugbugin. So, lipat, preach ulit. Dating na naman, susugurin sila, bubugbugin. Lipat, preach ulit. Yun yung nangyayari. Paul said, I remain consistent even when people are coming trying to beat me up. I remain consistent. Now, that's not happening to us. Maybe someday it will happen to us. But then, uh, it ha- it's happening in another form. People ganging up on, on, on people who are standing for truth. But despite of that, remain consistent anyway. Kahit po pinagtutulungan ka na, kahit na ayaw ka nilang paniwalaan, kahit na it seems like you're the only one standing, remain consistent anyway. That's what Paul is saying. Alright? It says here in labors. Labor here, here means copos. It means toil, to the point of exhaustion. 
Kahapon nabasa ko po sa pinos ni Pastor Jesse ata o ni Roy Chong. Uh, 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 government workers in Indonesia kasi may ano ngayon, election, died of exhaustion. Yun yung sinasabi dito. That you, you keep on working until you're very, very tired. But Paul said, I remain consistent. In labors. That's why he said, I'm not lazy. That's what he's saying. Even if I work and work and work and get tired, and too tired actually to continue working, I remain consistent. Minsan po sa atin, pagpagod na, ayaw na. Diba? Pero pagpagod na, kaya pang gawin ng ibang bagay except the ministry of the Lord. Diba? Ako, kahit pagod na ako, makarinig ako ng bola, takbo, laro. Diba? But ganun din ba ang devotion natin sa, uh, while we're serving God? Is that the same devotion that we show in the ministry of the Lord? Uh, pagka, when it's basketball game, magpipintura, oh, busy. Diba? G- basketball game, maglilinis, may gagawin. Di po ba? That's why, sa malilit na bagay na yun, we can prove oh, if we are really consistent in the Lord. Now, this is something that can really test our consistency pag pagod na pagod ka na. Are you still going to be consistent? Okay? In watchings, the word here, watching in Greek is a group uh, a group niya, which means sleeplessness. Pag wala ng tulog. Ganun lang kasimple sinasabi ni Paul. Kahit kulang ang tulog ko, tuloy pa rin. Kahit na hindi na, ako, hindi na ako nakatulog, I remain consistent. Even though I have sleepless night. You know, sometimes serving the Lord and working in the ministry can rob your eyes of sleep. Yeah. But remain consistent anyway. And it's true. And that's why I, 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 uh, that's why I uh, salute the preachers. Even though they're busy, they have work, they have family to take care of, whatever. But they preach anyway. And I know that, that preparing for preaching robs us of sleep. But then we do, we do it, not, not, because, uh, we w- but not because we want to impress anyone here, but we want to glorify the Lord. Amen. You know, people, even if you, you lack sleep, continue anyway. Hindi, hindi continue your sleep in church. Okay? <laughs> continue serving the Lord anyway. Okay? That, that is what that is what means. That, what it means. Okay? Kaya yun po ang kahinaan dito ng iba. Sin- sino mahilig matulog dito? Pag hindi na kompleto yung tulog, wala na sa mood. Ayaw na. Ayaw na Bible study, ayaw na magbasa ng Bible, ayaw na magpray, ayaw na mag-attend. Dahil kulang lang sa tulog. Huwag naman po sana ng ganun. Okay? In watchings. Ito pa. Skip ko sana kaso nasa Bible. In fastings. Kahit walang pagkain. Serve the Lord. Even if there's no food during Saturday, attend the prayer meeting. Amen? Okay, kahit na, kahit na sinabi, even if our pastor says, hey, we don't have food on Saturday, we just have prayer. Go anyway. Hey, we're not serving food. Even though sometimes it seems like we are. Sometimes the preachers, maybe we go to ch- every Tuesday just for the food. Maybe, I don't know. But maybe sometimes we, that is our reason. But that is, should not be our God. That's what uh, uh, Kuya, uh, Preacher June said yesterday. Food is not what we're serving. Okay, and it's, and it, we may laugh at this, but this is something that tests the character of people. Amen. You know, in, in, the, in the seminary, this is something that brings out the beast in every Bible student. You know, it brought out the beast in me. Okay, I was working, we were uh, 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 cementing and bringing, <laughs> carrying the cement the whole, whole morning. And we went to the kitchen, and the job of the lady Bible students is to cook, right, and prepare food. But then we went to the kitchen, they hid the food. They said that unless you wash all these uh, things that we used to cook, you're, we're not going to bring the food out. They put it in their dorm. So I opened the door and took the food, even though it's their room. And I said, kapal naman ang mukha nyo, kayong magpala doon, sa kami nyo papakainin, gutom na gutom na, papairapan nyo pa kami. Inaaway ko na yung mga babae doon. You know, even kahit na gaano ka kabait, pag gutom ka, monster ka. <laughs> diba? Kaya nga po, huwag natin, huwag natin mamaliitin. Don't let us not underestimate our need for food. Sometimes food controls us. It brings out the beast in you. Okay? Hindi ka matira ng pagkain, galit ka na. <clears throat> Maaga ka kasing kumain para matiran ka. Diba? Pagkain lang yan, kapatid. Ang daming pagkain sa buong mundo. Pagkain lang yan. Mapag-aawayan pa natin. Di po ba? Dumating ka ng late sa prayer meeting, wala na pagkain, tisod ka. No? Diba? Yun lang pala, hanggang pagkain ka lang pala. Okay? This, but, but Paul says this, why? Because he knows the power of this in his life. It can challenge your consistency in the Lord, in fastings. Okay? Now, he says all these things. Ano ka ba? Yan, medyo nakangiti pa iba eh, kaya tuloy pa. Okay? He says here in fastings. Now, all these first ten things, I believe, or nine things, he talks about circumstances in life. Now, yung mga nangyari sa buhay ko, I remain consistent for the Lord. 
And that is what we should do. You know, we can never control circumstances. We can never control what happens in our lives. But we can control how we react to it. Amen. And it's only our fault if we reacted in a way that is not worthy of our calling. Right. And we are very much guilty of this. If you're going to look at my Facebook last year, and dami kong kaaway. Di ba? Kung puta kayo sa isang pastor's group sa Pilipinas, nagmumura yung mga yun. Eh, bumurahin ka na, paggalit na. Because that means we're guilty. Sometimes we're not consistent. Even in just commenting on Facebook. Even in just uh, answering a person, if a foolish question. Minsan papatulan na natin. We didn't remain consistent. That is not what God wants to do. Now, he's, now he's telling inward qualities. Now, he says here, by pureness. Okay? Now, the Greek word, uh, the pure, pureness here, hagnotis, which means uprightness of life. Again, he's telling them, be consistent in your testimony. Okay, Philippians 2.15 says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. We can never shine if we're doing what they're doing in this world. Second Peter 3.14 Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. You know, sometimes we, we wonder why we can't bring our friends to church. Why? Because they don't see difference in us. You know, sometimes we wonder why we cannot uh, attract people to accept, uh, to, to look at their lives and look at their situation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they don't see pureness in us. They don't see the uprightness of life in us. They, they, they just see us as, as, as someone who's the same as them. No difference at all. That's why you are, we are to be consistent to this, uh, to, to this. We are not to compromise. To remain pure, remain doing what is right. Uh, a, a sculptor named Danneker, he's the one who sculpted uh, one of the most beautiful sculptures of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, what, once he did that, uh, Napoleon sent for him and asked him to carve Venus. Now, his answer to Napoleon is this, Sir, the hands that carved the Christ can never again carve a hidden goddess. Now, let's learn to say no to things that are going to compromise our faith. But it's, we might say it's easy to say no, but it depends on the person who's asking us. Sometimes the person is someone dear to us, we can't say no anymore. Even though we know it will compromise our faith. But we have to remain pure, blameless, spotless. Not only by pureness, by knowledge. The word knowledge here is defined as knowledge of the things that must be done. Not only knowing, but doing what you know. Okay, by knowledge, we, have, we are to know. We are to, we, we are to know the situation of this world and act accordingly. And we are to know most especially the Word of God because it's the Word of God who's telling us how to act in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation. That's why, kapatid, a person who do not, do not have the desire to know the Word of God can never glorify God in his life. Why? You will not know how to respond. You will not know how to react. You will not know how to live a godly life. This is our manual. This is our uh, instructional book. If we don't know this, we don't know how to live. That's why andali natin mag-compromise. That's why andali natin maggawa ng mga bagay na hindi nakakalugod sa Panginoon. Why? Hindi natin alam. And sometimes it's just, uh, it's just a, a, a matter of reading the Bible. It's just that and praying to the Lord. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering. Okay, no, this is towards not only towards situation, but towards people as well. Dapat po meron tayong long-suffering sa mga tao. Na kahit na anong ginagawa sa atin, bad, they do bad things, they do bad things, we are patient with them. We, we have long-suffering with them. And it's connected na rin yung kanina dito, yung next word here, kindness. We are to show kindness despite of what they're doing to us. Minsan po, pagka binato ka ng bato, kukunin mo, babalik mo sa kanila. Yun ang, yun ang natural. Yun yung madaling gawin. But then, the Bible calls us to kindness. He, he, the Bible calls us to be kind to them anyway, to love your enemies, to, to, to have a love that God, that, that, the love that God has, uh, has given to us. Yung pagmamahala, despite of anything they're doing, we still love them. And that is very hard to do. It's hard to love people who are doing bad things to you. It's hard to love people who, 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 who seem like they do not love you back. It's hard. Mahirap magmahal ang hindi ka mahal. Diba? Pero mahalin mo pa rin. That is what the Bible is saying. You be kind to them. Show kindness. Kindness goes a long way. I, I believe the reason why we, are, we were convicted to repent is, we, is because we have seen the kindness and the love of God. 
Now, despite of our trespasses, our sins, uh, our lives that are not pleasing to Him, we saw that He loved us, He gave His life for us, He's forgiven us, He's offering us uh, uh, salvation. Now, because of that kindness, we are now called to repent of the sins that we are doing. Contrast yan. Para bang, kunyari, ginaman ka na masama, sinukliyan mo na mabuti, makaka-realize yan. Yun yung ultimate sampal. Diba? Yun yung ultimate sampal. Hindi mo na kailangan talagang sampalin, gawan mo lang na mabuti. Yun na yung sampal. You don't have to say anything. They will realize. If they, if, if they say bad things to you and you reply with good words, they will realize, oops, I should not. I should stop. No, but if you, they say bad things to you, you reply bad things, they say bad things again, you say more bad things, it will never stop. But the Bible says to love them, to be kind to them, to be long-suffering to them. That's why we should not close the door on anyone. Always realize that the grace of God can change even the vilest of sinners. Whatever he is, he even, I, I, I have uh, heard pastors preach who were hit men. Okay? They're telling their story. They're doing drugs, drinking, killing people, doing all these bad things. But the grace of God that touched them changed their life completely. That's why yung katabi mo na, mas, na masungit lang, huwag mo naman saraduhan ng pinto. Sungit lang naman. Yung katabi mo na hindi, na, na hindi marunong magpasalamat, huwag po natin kamuhian. Yun lang naman. God can change them. Pray for them. Okay? By the Holy Ghost. Now, Paul showed consistency by showing that he has the Holy Ghost in his life. Okay? By the Holy Ghost. By love and faith. This is what I was saying. Love. Yun, yun naman talaga ang totoong pagmamahal. It never fails. Kaya yung pagmamahal mo, sa mga, mga nag, minahal mo dati, na hindi mo na mahal ngayon, hindi totoong pagmamahal yun. Because the Bible says, love never faileth. Hindi po tapos whatever happens it never fails you continue to love them kaya nga kahit na may mahal na siyang iba mahal mo pa rin yun yung tunay na pagmamahal okay all right love and faith all right by the word of truth now in spite what Paul is saying here in spite of what is happening to me i'm still preaching the truth i remain consistent people listen i preach the truth People don't listen, I preach the truth. Mobs come at me, I preach the truth. They, they, they uh, threaten my life, I preach the truth. They leave me alone, I preach the truth. It doesn't change, I will stand in the truth. By the word of truth, by the power of God, which is the only power that Paul relied upon in his life. By the power of God. Because he knows in himself, he has no power. God has given him a thorn in the flesh. God has stripped him of all the authority he had. He had left everything. He has no power. In himself alone, no one will listen to him. But because of the power of God, he relying on the power of God, patuloy po siya na nagpapatuloy sa Panginoon. It says here, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Amen. Kasi po, alam nyo po, kung tayo makikipagkatwiran lang sa kanila, talo tayo. Amen. If we are just going to, uh, to, ano ba yan, to reason with them in the knowledge of this world, they're smarter than us. They're more intelligent than us. We cannot beat them. Just don't talk about science with them. Just use the word of God because this is the power of God unto salvation. This is what we should preach. Alright? By the power of God. Most of the time, we fail because we, we fail to depend on the power of God, which is always available to us. And it's just our fault that we don't avail of it. By the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Now, the Bible says in Galatians, on your right hand is the sword of the Spirit, on your left hand is the armor. Now, isabihin dito ni Paul, I'm ready. I'm always consistent. I'm ready in whatever happens. I have the armor. That means whatever happens, if someone asks me, I can answer. If someone uh, asks me what the way of salvation, I can answer. If someone challenges of the Christ being a Messiah, I can answer him. Now, are you the same way as Paul? Kaya po ba natin yun? Nakaya natin na handa tayo lagi? Handa tayo lagi na makipagkatwiran? Not for the sake of that, but for the sake of persuading them to believe Christ? Are we ready? Are we, do we always have that uh, armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left? All right? Uh, uh, one thing, and I have to share this. Sir James Young Simpson, he's a Christian doctor. He lived in a time when there was no anesthesia yet. Like people, when they were doing surgery, they just trapped them down and cut them open. That's what they do before. So now this Christian doctor, he did his best to find a anesthesia, to, to find a way to put them to sleep before operating on them. But then, when he did find a way, Christians... Uh, 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 persecuted him and told him that you should not do that because it is God's purpose 
in our lives to experience pain. And, and I don't know what verse they use for that, but that's what they said. But then, he didn't answer them in any kind of wisdom or in his medical wisdom. He searched the Bible for answer. And he found it in uh, Genesis 2.12, 2.21. It says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And he published that answer to all these naysayers, and then they just stopped. Do we have that ability to use the Word of God to reason with people? Yan po, kaya nga po minsan, yun po magkar- yun ang masarap na kaibigan. Yung kaibigan na kayang gamitin ng salita ng Panginoon para bigyan ka ng advice. You know, ma- lalo tayong mga Pilipino, mahilig tayo sa close-close, best friend-best friend, kaibigan-kaibigan. Kaso nga lang, kadalasan, pupunta tayo sa kaibigan na hindi naman tayo nat- masyadong natutulungan. You know, a person can give us good advice. But what's better is they give us good advice based on the Word of God. Yeah. Yun po yung maganda. Ngayon, binigyan kanya ng advice. Pwede makikita ba natin sa Bible yan? Para alam natin paano talagang gawin. It has something, yun yung dapat nating kinukuha na kaibigan, mentor. La kaya nga yung mga preachers, mga nag-preach dito, we have to be skillful in doing that. Not only to advise, but to use the Word in advising people. Okay? Are we skillful in that? We should be if we're not. Okay? Now, he... After that, uh, after all these uh, 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 inner qualities he's saying, now, let's go to the last part. Now he's saying uh, uh, paradoxes. Yung mga parang uh, things that are seemingly impossible but are proven true in his life. Sabi niya dito, by honor and dishonor. Now, there are times that Paul was honored by churches now, because they know what Paul is doing. But more times, he's being dishonored. But he's saying that whether I am honored or not, I'm going to be consistent. You know, sometimes people will not serve unless they are being uh, mentioned. People will not serve God unless they are being appreciated. Kaya minsan, ah, et, eto yung mga, isabihin mong title ko bago mo ako introduce, ah. Uh, DDD, MDD, yung mga ganyan. Kailangan honor mo muna siya. Yung accomplishment niya. You know, there, sometimes pe- they, they miss the point of being a Christian. You know, why do you want people to honor you? They miss the whole point. The Bible says here, uh, here in... Uh, Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.31 That according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Not to himself. Amen. Don't seek for, the honor, for people to honor you. Now, if they honor you because of what you're doing for God, don't let it get into your head. If they are dishonoring you, continue doing it anyway. Okay? Be consistent by honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report. This is true even in the church at Corinth. Some people believe Paul. Some people are doubting his apostleship. Some people are doubting his miracle, uh, the things that he's doing. Some people are even accusing him of abusing his power as an apostle. But in spite of all this evil report or, or, or people destroying his name, he said, I remain consistent as a minister of God. And this is something that we are experiencing. You know, some people, if they cannot answer you anymore biblically, they will defame you. If they cannot answer you anymore using the word of God, they're going to, uh, they're going to destroy your character uh, 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 next. That is, that is usually what they do. But then the Bible says, remain consistent anyway. Don't fall into that. You know, before I learned my lesson, I fell into that a lot of times. I, I, I fight them, uh, uh, fist, hindi naman suntukan, but sinasabayan ko yung ginagawa nila. But I learned, and I praise God, that I, as I'm studying this, uh, uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, God is showing me things in my life that, I, that needs correcting. And that is the reason why we study the Bible anyway is to correct things in our lives. Amen. And even, even in here in 2 Corinthians, Paul is always saying, hey, live a righteous life. Don't battle to them. Yeah. That, was, that is what Paul is saying. Right? Even if they defame you, they destroy your name, remain consistent. All right? As deceivers and yet true. Parang ang sinasabi ni Paul dito, kasi ang, ang bansag sa kanya, deceiver, false prophet. Para ba sinasabi niya, sa lahat naman ng false prophet, ako yung nagpipreach ng katotohanan. Yeah, so even though some people think that I'm, this, I'm a deceiver, I'm preaching the truth. I remain consistent in that. As known and yet well known. As unknown and yet well known. Whether people know you or not, remain consistent in doing the word of God. Anyway, we're not doing it for the applause of men. As dying and behold we leave. As chastened and not killed. And, and this is very evident in the previous chapters when he said that uh, whatever bad things happen to me, Christ is with us. Even though people seek to kill us, Christ is preserving us for His, for His glory. That's why we, we, we need to remain consistent. A sorrowful yet rejoicing. Now, binilisan ko iba because I love this point. A lot of things in this life can be an excuse to be sorrowful. But remain joyful anyway. 
A sorrowful yet always rejoicing. You know, one of the most sad life, if you're just going to look at it in face value, is the life of the Apostle Paul. De Demas left him. His friends left him. The first time that he, he faced trial, everyone left him. Right? Diba sinasabi niya yun, everyone has forsaken me. Okay, only, only, only Luke is with me in, in another part. Well, his friends left him, family left him. Yung mga tao na, na he relied upon these people, he considers them as a workers together with him, but they leave him when, when trials and afflictions come. That is a reason to be sad. But he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, a lot of things can make you sad. Walang uh, la, la, mga bagay na nakakalungkot sa buhay. You know, the Bible says, yeah, sure. Malungkot ka, but, but the Bible says, always be in the spirit of rejoicing. Why? Because everything works together for good if you love the Lord. You know, as poor, this is the last thing, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. Paul is saying, I'm poor, I have nothing, yet I make people rich. Not rich in material things, but rich in the knowledge of God. As, as, as someone who have nothing, he said, yet possessing Many things, possessing all things, he's is, 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 is again referencing the promise of heaven and, and the new body and the new life and the new kingdom that we are going to have. The Bible says here in John 14, 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Bakit pa po tayo magsisik na magpakayaman dito? Mayaman na po tayo. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, if it's God's will for you to be poor, if it's God's will for you to have nothing, rejoice and be consistent anyway. Why? We already have the promise in eternity. That's what Paul is saying. The challenge this morning is to be consistent. I don't think Meron na skip si Paul dito ng mga circumstance sa buhay. I believe Paul has tackled everything that can happen to you. I believe Paul has tackled every attitude that we need to have. I believe Paul has tackled everything na, na pwede natin patunayan sa buhay natin. I, I don't know if meron man siya na skip dito sa, sa atin na yun. But what his, the, his point here is, be consistent whatever happens. Live as a minister of God, worthy of the calling. In good times and bad times, in rich or poor, uh, happy or not, live a consistent life in the Lord. And I hope and I pray that we will be challenged and try to decide in our lives that we are going to live consistent lives in the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the message. Uh, even though uh, we 